Hi, good Shabbos, everybody. Ruben Levine here. Ten days till Rosh Hashanah, the new year, Yom Hadin, when we're supposed to go to a Kaddish Baruch Hu and show him that we've prepared ourselves and we've been working hard and we've been turning ourselves around. We've been doing this together with these weekly sessions uh, since the summertime during the three weeks when we were mourning the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. We started showing that each week in each Parsha, we are told directly how to go on this journey and get prepared so that on Yom Hadin, on uh, Rosh Hashanah, we can ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu to give us good tidings for health, happiness, for uh, Parnassa, for our, our prosperity. Uh, all things are get recorded in the book for the upcoming year. And next year, interestingly enough, happens to be a Shemitah year. In Israel, it's going to be one once every seven years. We have to let the land lay fallow. We don't even use any of the produce of the land of Israel during that year. So what we accumulate in the sixth year has to last us to the seventh year. And we'll talk about Shemitah in, more, in greater detail another time. But next year is going to be a very challenging year for our brothers and sisters who live in Israel because they have to literally rely on the produce that they've accumulated this year. So everyone's going to Rosh Hashanah with a lot of uh, concern, a lot of nervousness. And um, what we learn in this week's Parsha of Kitavo is so appropriate and ties together all the lessons we've been learning about fearing HaKadosh Baruch Hu and through fear comes knowledge and wisdom how to fight with the Yetzirah, with the evil inclinations and the lusts and desires that pull us away from being good Jews, how to go on this journey to transition to loving Hashem and doing things out of love as opposed to fear. And I think it all comes together beautifully here in this Parsha. The Pasuk says at the beginning of this week's uh, portion as follows, when you come to Israel, to the land of Israel that a God gave you, and you inherit it, and you sit on it, you actually live there. You have to take from the first of the fruits that is produced by the land, that you bring from your land. And then it goes on to say, And you have to take these first of these fruits and put them in a basket. And you have to go to the house, to the Beit HaMikdash, inside Yerushalayim. Everyone would have to journey with this basket to go to the Great Mount and give it over to the Kohanim. Uvatayal Kohen, it says. You go to the Kohen, Asher Yebayamimahem, that is... Uh, the high priest at the time uh, of this uh, coming to Rishalayim. And you have to say over the sentence that I came forth to the land that God gave me, and I came here to give him the first of my fruits. And the Kohen takes it from you, and he puts it in front of the Mizbeach in front of the altar. And then you have to go on to say, I was an Arami Ovedavi, right? I was an individual who came and I was taken down to Egypt and I lived there with very little under a lot of toil and we were poor. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu made us into a great nation, a huge nation, a big nation, a strong nation. And that's the phraseology that you have to say. So the, um, the Tivo Shalom comes along and asks some very interesting questions. He says, He says, this is such a huge commandment, and it's such an important and impactful commandment, and he brings down from the Sifri, 
al haperush vahayakiti vukita vola aretz on this particular passage that we just read, a semitzvazu shebischara tikanes la aretz. You do this commandment, you will be able to go ahead inside Israel and inherit the land. Uba bereshis rabba ita al haperush bereshit bara alokim. He writes that we learn from the uh, from bereshis rabba on the pasuk that we see at the beginning in Genesis that. In the beginning, God created, bereshit, the word. He says, ein reshit, there is no beginning, ela bikurim, uh, without this um, particular mitzvah and this particular commandment. So the whole world was created just for this commandment. Can you imagine? How is that possible? He goes on to state, He says there's a lot of examples in the Torah as to why this particular mitzvah, this particular commandment of bringing the first of your fruits is so important. And at kol haparasha shel hitavut sha'am Yisrael, ech shenhiyu la'am hanivchar. That we learn out from this particular commandment that it is at the foundation of being the Jewish people. Amazing. So how do we understand this? How do we learn out from this why it's so important? But let's look at what the process was that someone would go through. A person would toil all year on his field and plow and plant and prune trees and work and work and work and sweat, living off of whatever he has in his bank account all this time, taking this risk that hopefully out of the ground will become more produce for the upcoming year. And what happens after that year of concern and nervousness? We then go around and we look for the first of the fruits that appear on the tree. And what do we do? We have to take a string and tie it around that fruit and say, this is for Bikurim. This is what's going to go in the basket. I can't even pluck the fruit from the tree and taste it and taste the, 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 the fruits of my labor. Literally, I don't have an opportunity to pull a date or a fig or, or, or a plum off the tree and just take a bite out of it and say, oh, it was worth it all. I have to first take this stuff and take it to God. Only the produce from these trees later can I use for myself. And I have to make this big trip. And actually, there were people in each town who would take everybody's baskets and go and they would go as a group. And we've learned in the past week how important it is to be a group. This is the process that we would go through. And what it teaches us is that we have to stop for a minute and know who butters our bread and know that God is taking care of us. You know, sometimes we think life is like a vending machine. I go up to the vending machine. I see the soda I want. I put the money in. But when I go to that vending machine and the soda that I want is empty and there's no more of it and I don't have to make a selection itself, we get angry. And that whole day that I was at the amusement park having fun and having a good time with my friends completely gets deflated. Why? Because I'm not getting a Coke and instead I now have to get a Sprite or a 7-Up or something else. And we don't realize that God knows what's best for us. He knows what needs to be presented to us. Good things, not so good things in order for us, A, to appreciate what we have and appreciate the good things in life, but also to understand and acknowledge that we are children of Hashem. We are children of the Lord and a Kaddish Baruch who gives us what we need and we have to rely on it. And that faith begins to start transitioning from fear to loving because we know that God loves us and he takes care of us and he gives us good stuff and bad stuff sometimes to go ahead and allow us to acknowledge who we are, what we are, and why it is so important to establish this know-how that a Kaddish Baruch Hu is at the center of everything in our life. And if we can get there and understand these tools that we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks and really show up on the day of judgment with this commitment and this evidence that we get it, we are going to have a fabulous layer last year. And even if we can't plow the earth next year, because it's the seventh year and it's time for the land to rest, we still will prevail 
God will give us good tidings. And the following year afterwards, we'll have even more produce presented to us that we could take advantage of. But first and foremost, we got to give something back to Akadosh Baruch Hu to say thank you and to say I love you. Have a good Shabbos.